Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us once again for this, the final, ninth episode of the 2013 Trinity College Football Coaches Show. I'm Harry Hawkins for TSN, joined once again by Trinity Football Head Coach Jeff Devaney. Let's take a look at some highlights from Trinity's 40-10 beatdown of previously undefeated Wesleyan on homecoming weekend. All right, so we're going to start off with, uh, with what we did defensively in this game to give you an idea. Uh, one of the things we wanted to do is we had to stop the run. So um, we, what we tried to do is keep our box intact all the time. We didn't want our linebackers to have to remove themselves, which put our secondary in some one-on-one -on -one situations. But we were okay with that. If they were going to move the ball, we were going to force them to do it, throw on the ball. We thought we had some good matchups on the perimeter. In this first clip here, it's just gives give you an idea of what we were able to do up front against a team that had run the ball really well uh, all season long. Uh, junior defensive end Nate Sear right here is the key to this play, really getting off the ball, creating a second level on the, uh, on the line of scrimmage, and our linebackers were able to play aggressively and play downhill and not worry so much about run-pass reads. On this next clip here, you'll see their quarterback is, uh, is, is checking because he sees us in that front. They were doing a lot of this stuff where they were checking if the linebacker didn't remove, so they're checking to a pass play here. And one of the reasons we were able to do what we did is, is our secondary played very well. Um, junior Brian Donis had a great game, and evidenced by this play here, he played very aggressively, really jumped some routes, had a lot of pass breakups, and that gave us the confidence to leave those linebackers in the box. This was a play that they had really hurt some other teams on, the outside zone play where they block down and pull. And what we want to do on this play is just string it out. You can see Junior... Linebacker Will Herbert here on the puller. You know, we told those guys don't go under the blocks, don't go up the field, just kind of string this out, make it go sideways. Because one thing that we do do very well defensively is run. And you can see Nate Sear from the backside here, Rob Gow uh, corralling the football, and we were able to really hurt their outside zone play. Again, going back to the similar type of look, here they are in their two tight end set. We're leaving our linebackers in the box. Matter of fact, Tom Szymanski is going to come with some edge pressure here, which is leaving our secondary isolated. Really good job by senior safety Brendan Bader here. They're going to run a double move on him and max protect. And just technique, absolutely perfect technique by Brendan here. He attacks the, the downhill play, gets his right hand on the hip of the receiver, carries it with a man turn, and finds the ball. And, um, you know, their quarterback had thrown zero interceptions on the season. We told our guys all week, law of averages, we were bound to get a few this week. We were, we, were, we were aiming for three. Another run play here again, you can see they've got two tight ends both on the same side here, and we've inverted our safety, which allows Szymanski here, the outside linebacker, to be more aggressive and not have to worry about setting an edge. And he really bottles this play up here. One of the things their running backs have done very well against other teams is bounce plays. And with us having Szymanski and Weatherby on the outside, we did a great job of being able to bottle the plays up inside where our defensive line was able to knock their offensive line back off the ball. Good gang tackle here by our guys, too. <clears throat> Another one here with the tight end, two tight ends on the same side. Now they're running that pin and pull outside zone play. Again, Szymanski's playing the inside pad here of that wing. And what we're trying to do is force this play to keep bouncing sideways because we know with our team's speed we'll be fine there. What we've seen them do against a lot of other teams is run this outside play and be able to cut it up and hit a gap. And we're trying to make it so there's no gaps. So you can see right here between the two D, D linemen and Szymanski playing inside, there is no gap to bounce that play downhill. And it gets strung out. Rob Gow does a nice job playing over the top. Gets brought all the way back to uh, the defensive line and the Mike linebacker Frank Leva. Here's that same idea here. They're putting the formation in the boundary. We're inverting our safety so that our linebackers can stay in the box. They're going to go play action here. Again, the, the, line, the DBs are basically in an isolated situation. Uh, we get a tipped ball, which uh, Frank Leva picks off for our second interception of the game. Uh, unfortunately, we blocked in the back there, brought the ball back a little bit, but we were able to kick a field goal after that one. Here again, that outside zone play here to the tight end wing set with... Uh, this is Mike Weatherby now. Mike does a great job of, of bottling us up here. And then senior cornerback, Akeem Labatou, 
They ran this play three times to his side, never got uh, any positive yardage on the play. You don't see a lot of cornerbacks being physical, but one thing we're not afraid of is a team going lone tight end to Akeem's side. He's got the, linebacker, the mentality of a linebacker. Great effort from the backside by uh, defensive end Preston Kelly as well. <clears throat> So this just gives you an idea. This, just, this, this picture right here just reminds me of uh, old-fashioned Trinity defense. We're going to get a missed tackle here by Brendan Bader. This is one of their adjustments to the man coverage, was throwing some screens in the second half. And Bader misses the tackle, but he misses it to the side that we always, we always talk about. It's okay to miss tackles. Just miss it the right way. And Bader misses it, and he's got eight of his buddies running to the ball. And that's just a good picture of defensive football right there with the whole team over around the ball. Okay, again, similar type of idea here. This is a short yardage play, and we're going to pinch the entire D-line, and you're going to see two things that I liked on this picture. First of all, the D-line, everybody does what they're supposed to do. Then Mike, uh, Mike linebacker Frank Leva plays over the top, and then you're going to see cornerback Akeem Labatou, when the ball bounces all the way outside, makes a tackle for a minus two gain on a third and short play. Just really well executed by the guys. Everybody fits where they belong, and then again, you get your corner making a tackle for a, a, a negative play on a short yards play. It's a, that's a big time football right there. This is this is kind of just putting the icing on the cake. This is 25 seconds left in the game, and you know they're coming out in their four wides and throwing the ball, and Tom Samansky comes off the edge, kind of forces a bad throw here by their quarterback, and you know the third interception of the game went to Casey Tanner, who brought it back for a touchdown. Just kind of finish the day off in a in a very uh, very kind of fun and positive way. You guys got a chance to celebrate that one there. Now special teams was big for us in this game. We had great field position at all four phases of our special teams. I thought won their particular uh, phase. Here you're going to see on the opening kickoff, balls kicked the freshman uh, Darian Myers, and we get a really good double team here from uh, Noah Jita and P.J. Dorsey at the point of attack, and great block by Paul McCarthy and Yosa Nosemiefen. And then one of the things that this kid, number one for them, had usually been a safety. He didn't act as a safety here, but Ian Duggar went and picked him up. <laughs> and Darian makes a great move there. Darian's got great speed. And, you know, to start the game with the ball, they deferred on the kickoff and kicked the ball to us. And to start it out around the 50, just start us off in the right tempo. And then this is a kickoff return later in the game. Similar type of thing here. This time, Darian's got to run to catch the ball, makes a tough catch, and you're going to see he takes the ball all the way back, almost like a reverse. Great block by off-returner Ian Duggar here, almost acting like a fullback. Ian actually makes two blocks on that play, and uh, you know it's a lot easier to start with your offense when you're on the plus 30 going in. Our punter, Kyle Pulick, was also named the special teams player of the week in the league. Uh, he pinned them inside the 10 a couple times. This was a nice nice uh, thing right here. Ben Rosenblatt, who obviously had missed the extra point in the Amherst game, and then missed the extra point first one in this game. So you're thinking, geez, what's going through Ben's head at this time? We put him out there for a field goal here. We're up 13-3, to and you know he puts this through to make it 16-3. to and that just gave him a big boost of confidence and uh, will help him going forward in his, in his young career. Now on the offensive side of the ball, my biggest question mark going into the game was were we going to be able to block their defensive front because they had done a great job of stopping the run. And you know everybody knows we've had some trouble with our front five with some injuries and things like that. Had uh, Will Emery, our senior guard, go down last week. So just haven't been able to play the same five guys very much. But this started us off pretty well. We go with a play-action pass early in the game, and Sonny steps up and throws a real good ball to A.J. Jones. And A.J. just has a knack for doing this. Don't tell me how he comes down with these balls. It never looks good. It never looks natural. It, 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 but the ball always seems to end up in his hands somehow. And uh, that set up our, our first touchdown, which right here, this was a pretty special moment, actually. Early in the game, Chris Vergon went down with an injury. Uh, you know, our offensive staff did a good job in this game. We did, did some, uh, some on-the-ball stuff to, to get them to basically tell us what they were doing defensively. And here they give away the man coverage. Senior Eddie Frank is in there, and he's going to double move this safety in the man coverage. We're going to max protect against the blitz. 
and Sonny hits him right in stride. You know, big play, started us off, first score of the game, and for it to be Eddie Franca to get that score made it even more special. You can see how excited the guys are for Eddie. Next drive coming back down here with our offense, again doing the uh, on the ball, trying to find out what they're in. We get them in a defense where they don't have much of an overhang on the weak side and run an outside zone to Ben Crick. Nice block by Evan Bunker at the point of attack, and that got us the second score here. And I, I guess we had, had scored two touchdowns before Wesley even got a first down in the game. So real good start. I thought it was important that we get off to that good start. Now here we go. This is... Uh, this is just one of the reasons why we think Sonny's got a special future. They're going to run a, a zone pressure here, and we're going to miss the protection. We actually should pick this up, uh, but our, start, our guard there misses the protection. This is a third down play. should be a complete loss. And Sonny how, somehow slips the tackle and runs for 14 yards for a first down, keeping the drive alive. And then this is one of the... The plays that was uh, well designed by our offensive staff, I thought, again, you get a lot of man coverage down in the red zone. Uh, we got a third and short. You can pretty much guarantee they're going to be in man. We're going to bunch it up here to make sure we can tell that they're in man. And we're going to hand off an outside zone play to Evan Bunker, who's going to then turn and throw the ball back to Sonny Puzo. A uh, little quarterback throwback play. Uh, that ended up working out as well. as Sometimes you draw things on the board and they don't work. This one happened to work really well. And that sent us into halftime with a 23-3 lead. And I just love the way our guys played this game. They played the game with energy, passion, but they played it with class too. After the scores, you can see they've given the ball back to the official and you know, celebrating with each other. You get the. I figured I'd show you this from two views. You can see Evans just about to get pressure when he turns and throws the ball. Uh, pretty good throw for a tailback. All right, another drive here. Now we're in the second half, and uh, we're going to run a read play here. You know, it's tough to defend when you get Evan Bunker and Ben Crick in the backfield, and then your quarterback can also run the ball. So. You can see here we're, gonna, we're reading the defensive end who's got to worry about Bunker and Crick, and then we're going to block the linebacker who would be coming off on the quarterback. Well-designed play, really well blocked. Good cut block by uh, the receiver there to get us an extra 10 yards. This was... Uh, You've seen this every week if you've watched the show. Some, somehow during the game, freshman Sonny Puzo connects with freshman Darian Myers on a, a pretty spectacular play. And this one here, uh, Sonny, I don't know how he got this ball off because he's throwing off his back foot. But even Darian Myers gets, gets his foot in bounds and catches this ball. Uh, it's hard to see on this film because it's blurry. But he's got his right foot in bounds while he's catching that ball. Pretty special play between those two guys. We're hoping they're going to have a big future for us. This is later in the game now. You know, we're getting to that point where we're uh, getting close to Evan Bunker breaking the NESCAC rushing record. And here it is. He becomes the all-time leading rusher in NESCAC football history. Pretty special moment for Evan and for every offensive lineman that's played here over the last four years. And then this is, you know, the game's getting to the point where it, you know it's pretty much in hand uh, but Wesleyan keeps man blitzing us so we take another shot here and get AJ a, uh, a touchdown pass in his last uh, football game of his career another special moment for a senior something he'll always remember and he got to share it with some of his former teammates down there in the end zone which was pretty nice There's the end zone view of that same play. All right, so there's the highlights from the week for those of you who weren't there. For those of you who were there, we had a great crowd. We appreciate your support. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen.
We appreciate your views and your time. I had a great time doing this this season in my final year here at Trinity. Check back in about two weeks for an end-of-year interview with Coach Devaney, and go Bams until next time.